Hey guys, it's Ed the Impala Guy. Welcome back to the channel. Sorry for my long absence. There's been a lot that's gone on in the last month or so. And let's get you caught up. Um, first of all, the reason for the uh, prolonged absence is um, this thing right here. My 2002 Suburban blew a fuel line and uh, was down for several weeks while we were trying to get uh, the fuel lines replaced. Um, of course, I did it myself. Uh, no easy task. Everything that's under that thing is rusted uh, to smithereens, the, the courtesy of living in the uh, rust belt. So anyhow, while that was down, guess what I was daily driving? That's right, this thing right here. And um, for about a month, I drove it every day, and I learned a lot of things about it. Um, a few problems that cropped up. Um, some of its quirks, some of its eccentricities, uh, but mostly I, f I found out that it's a really good car. It, it drives really nice. Um, the two things that, that really need attention are this, I found the steering rack ended up going bad. Um, it, it does the thing where um, at low speeds, if you turn left, you lose your power steering and all you gotta do is give it a little bit of gas and um, it picks right back up it's it's a kind of a known problem with these things and what happens is there's a um uh in the the piston inside the rack um it gets scored in there in the chamber and it bypasses fluid so that at the really low pressures uh that the pump puts out at uh, idle it doesn't provide enough pressure to push the rod you know push the piston um that direction to be able to turn the car left. So anyhow, uh, we have a new steering rack on order for this thing and it's gonna get a new steering rack. Um, it's also gonna need an alignment, four wheel alignment, um, and I'm gonna put a new set of tires on it. So this thing is gonna be ready to go here. But the reason I brought you along today is we're gonna get caught up on the bodywork while I've got it in the garage uh, and, and the Suburban back in working order. Um, I decided to start working on this uh, rust spot here, and if you remember what it looked like, it was um, basically rusted out in this general area, and uh, there was a hole that was leading, and my trunk is right in there, so you can see my trunk, high trunk, um, and there was no really good way of patching this. What they had done before uh, is they had uh, just stuffed it with foam and uh, silver tape and um, bondoed over it, and of course that didn't last too long. So, um, you know, the, the solution to this was to, to make a patch. The easiest solution was to go to the passenger side of, a, of an Impala and, um, and cut out this section and just fit it in. Unfortunately, on the parts Impala, the black one, that uh, area is smashed to smithereens and that was a no-go. And Crash is still sitting out there. I haven't decided what to do with her yet, but I didn't want to cut into the sheet metal on her just to make it a little patch. So what we did, um, and I think I've showed this on the last video, is um, I cut out the driver's side uh, fender uh, quarter panel this on the driver's side, uh, just forward of the gas tank. And what that did is it gave me wheel arches um, like that. And I did both the inner and the outer fender, or the inner and the outer quarter, because this is a, a two-piece uh, thing here. This is the inner um, portion of the quarter, and then, of course, the outer skin, and they bond right here. And um, GM puts this uh, the goopy foam stuff right along there to bond them together, and that leads to rust and um, not one of their brightest ideas. So what I did starting yesterday, and... and Sorry, I didn't bring you along for this. Is I cut out uh, the inner fend or the inner um, quarter, and I made a patch, and I did the bonding adhesive to bond it in place. Which basically all what it does is it gives me a backer for this and something for this um, to meet up to. It also completes the wheel arch under here, right to where it needs to be. Um, and then uh, today we started working on the outer patch and uh, basically just threw a bunch of um, 
cuts and measurements and cuts and measurements. Uh, here's what I've come up with. It will fit in here like such. And of course, it'll get uh, bonded in with uh, panel adhesive or bonding adhesive. Um, we will put uh, doublers down here to glue it to and we'll sheet metal screw it in. And then it'll basically complete the wheel arch. The other um, portion of this will be this right here to where this uh, bumper attaches. I left the bumper on purposely. Uh, once I start doing the body work, I'll pull it back off, but I needed the bumper on here to measure where this needs to be. And you can see, let me get this up here. Just about a perfect fit. Now there is a little bit of gap at the top, but that's all right. I mean, that's it doesn't have to be uh, super perfect. It's, you know, there is gonna be some filler here. Just hopefully not too much. Um, but basically that's it uh, for the progress so far. Uh, oh, the other thing I did do, and you can see it right here, um, new struts for the back. Well, new used struts. Um, a funny thing, while I was cutting up the uh, parts car, I noticed that um, the struts had been replaced in the back and looked like they were fairly recent. Um, they were still rusty, so it was probably, they probably done one winter in Michigan because that's all it takes to, to make them rusty. Um, but I figured since the struts on this car were original, uh, I figured anything newer than original equipment 2008 struts would be, uh, would be better off. So I pulled them off the parts car and lo and behold, they were about a year old. So I'm putting your old struts on here. Um, I did clean them up and paint them, make them look a little bit nicer. So um, it got new struts in the back and it rides a whole lot better. Um, once we get the steering rack replaced and uh, we'll take it for its uh, four wheel alignment and uh, the car will drive nice and straight and smooth. And then uh, we'll get the, uh, the body work finished here and uh, then it's gonna be uh, paint correction and a few little details I'm going to put the body side moldings on, but only after I buff the paint. Um, what else? That's really about it. Now oh, you can see my reflection. Hello. Hello. Um, so, like I said, for, for about a month, I really didn't do anything to it except drive it every day. It was nice having air conditioning during the really warm weather. Uh, the Suburban does not have air conditioning. Um... There was actually a couple days after I got the Suburban fixed that I did take this car simply because I wanted to drive in the air conditioning. But anyhow, it's time to get this thing finished and get it sold and moved on to the next project. Every week I look at Copart and there's like tons of project cars that I could bid on. But uh, until this one uh, gets sold, um, we're kind of stuck uh, not buying anything. So anyhow, uh, that's just a brief update. Um, I'll probably uh, update you as soon as I get uh, this all uh, finished in here, and um, then we'll start working on the body filler work and all the, the block sanding and the priming and the painting and, and that whole bit like we did on the other side. Um, anyhow, thanks for stopping in. Uh, we'll get you guys um, up to speed here, and um, I pro again apologize for, the, uh, for such a long delay in uploading stuff. Uh, anyhow, go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button if you're so inclined. Um, I'm, I'm up to 34 subscribers, which is awesome. 34 of you guys uh, saw fit to uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, and go ahead and hit the like button or hit the dislike button if you didn't like the video or you didn't like the weight. And let me know what you didn't like. Leave a comment. I read all the comments, especially since there's only like one or two of them. Um, but anyhow, this is... Um, this is getting towards the end of this project, and uh, I promise the next one will probably not take this near as long because I'm going to bid on a different type of car with different type of damage. Anything. It's something that will go a little bit quicker. Anyhow, um, thanks for stopping in. Uh, we'll, um, we'll get back to you as soon as we get a little farther along here. Thanks. All right. Morning, folks. I know my hair is a mess. I just kind of woke up a little bit ago, and... Um, Want to get out here and get right to work. Let me give you an update here. I got the backer strips installed and they're all bonded in. This is a test fitting of the patch that goes over it. I still need to trim a little bit here and here, make it fit a little bit flusher. Um, so as soon as we get that, we will um, bond this in place. It has to sit for 24 hours. Um, 
Well, it has to sit overnight at least. And then uh, it'll be good to go. We'll start with the body filler work. But that's basically what uh, what I came up with um, to mimic the the original um, you know body contours and the the um, the structure here. You can see underneath there's a, a you know a 90 degree bend in it, and then uh, the bumper will attach right here um, in the. Um, the bumper you can see that's where that will attach is right there it's, I got to rivet that back in um, somewhere and this was uh, this was the fastener this gets uh, stuck up into a square hole here's the piece the the factory piece um, so this sticks up in there and the screw goes up in it um, and that's what uh, that bit is there on the bumper. But since I'm not going to really take the time to replicate this square and this um, this uh, snapping clip here for the nut, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to, when I mount the bumper up here, um, bumper cover, I'll just drill a hole and we will nut and bolt it using uh, probably stainless steel hardware. It's easy to reach from behind here before you put the fender liner in. Um, it'll actually probably be a little bit better than, than factory as far as holding power. So that's the plans for this. Then we will uh, sand this, uh, you know, sand it all down, get it ready for body filler. And uh, we're going to fill and blend and then we'll, we'll paint and blend and, and do the whole thing there. And then uh, we're going to color it good. Uh, the other plans were for this side. Now, when I, uh, I had to get this car on the road, like in a hurry, because the Suburban broke. I had nothing to drive to work, so uh, basically slap some paint on it, slap some clear coat on it, and colored it good. Um, you can see that I didn't even um, get a chance to paint down there. So what I will probably do now that the bumper's off again, I will come back. Uh, this whole area is going to be uh, color sanded down um, with a thousand grit, and then I'm going to clear coat with an actual clear uh, with an actual HVLP gun. Uh, this was all done with a uh, spray can, by the way, um, and it's dirty, so you really can't see what quality of job it is. But um, the color came out really well with the spray can. The clear did not. I, I don't really like the clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a gun, a regular gun. Uh, they, uh, Eastwood sells one that you can use with the smaller compressors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to color sand this whole quarter panel and this roof rail all the way down to here and we will re-clear this entire thing that way we're not having to blend you can see the blend line that i tried now that and this this may buff out it may not but i'm gonna have to reshoot this with clear anyhow so why not just do the whole darn thing the only difficult part will be we'll be uh getting these back on um because you'll have to put the double-sided 3M tape and then trim around everything with a razor blade. So that won't be too fun, but it, it, it'll be doable. So we're going to re-clear this side with, you know, two or three coats of clear so we have some depth to it. And then we can buff the rest of the car um, and make it match, you know, the shine. Uh, we're going to clay bar uh, everything before we do anything, get all the contaminants off of it. Uh, the only other thing that I might look at doing, which I don't know yet, you can see there's a tiny rust spot here. And we may just take that down, do a little spray spritz here, and then uh, do a little clear over it and see if we can blend that. I don't want to be um, sanding down and clearing the entire roof. Uh, and then here in the front, we've got a few scratches that... Uh, We'll fill in, we'll do um, a paint correction on it and buff it all out. What? Anyhow, that's the plan for the car and uh, we're gonna get going, getting this patch done and uh, I'll, uh, I'll update you when it's all attached. I wanted to give you a little how-to here or show you what I'm doing. Um, I drilled a couple holes for um, 
self-tapping sheet metal screws. That's how we're going to uh, uh, bond this or clamp this together. But um, it's one of my uh, things I learned in aircraft mechanic school when we were working with sheet metal. For drilling, um, you want to use a spring-loaded center punch to make the little dimples before you drill. Makes it so your um, drill bit does not wander. Um, and it makes it just a lot easier to drill. So what I'm doing is I'm going here and dimpling where I'm gonna drill. Um, and like I said, then we'll drill the, the pieces and uh, we'll apply the uh, bonding adhesive, panel bonding adhesive, and then you can see uh, the screws. I did one from the inside, one from the outside. I will back these screws out if they're uh, in there, stuck in there, then I'll just uh, cut the heads off and grind them off. I kind of wanted to give you a little um, plug for this tool. It's just a spring-loaded center punch. I've had this since uh, I was work as an aircraft mechanic in the uh, late 1980s, uh, early uh, 1990s. And um, I don't even know who makes this one. Oh, this is Blue Point. This is a snap-on product. But uh, they sell them everywhere that you sell tools. And um, pick yourself one up if you're going to be doing any kind of sheet metal work. It also works as a nice scribe. You can scribe your uh, your metal. So anyhow, I'll, uh, I'll give you an update when I get this thing glued on. Okay, folks, you can see uh, we are complete with the patchwork here. Um, the bonding... Uh, material is going to take about 24 hours to dry. I can uh, take the screws out in about four hours, but I usually wait a little bit longer than that. Um, the stuff is really nice, and before anybody goes, man, you can't glue car parts together. Um, GM's been using this bonding adhesive on their body parts for uh, many years now. That roof right there is, is glued on with the, the same panel bond adhesive. Anyhow, um, we'll get... Uh, We'll get the screws out of it tomorrow morning and we'll start the uh, filler work and uh, we'll sand her down. Or we'll sand her down first, then we'll get ready for the filler and then uh, we'll do the body filler and uh, paint and uh, get this thing finished. My goal is to have this car finished by the, uh, by the end of the month for sure. I want it finished and sold by the end of the month, but um, I'm hoping to get it done in the next two weeks. We've got this body work to finish, uh, the steering rack, uh, four new tires with new TPMS sensors um, and that's about it and a little we'll do a clean in detail and then, you know we'll, we'll buff it get the paint looking good anyhow uh, that's gonna be it for now thanks for watching this video uh, hopefully the updates will come a lot quicker since uh, we're gonna be finishing this car up and then uh, we'll get on to the uh, the next project so thanks for tuning in hit the subscribe button if you're so inclined leave a comment down below Ring the bell if uh, you want to get uh, notified every time I post something new. All right. Thanks, folks. We'll see you later.